We are here to talk about technical art and roots into how it integrates with various other parts of the game development process. Um, and I guess we should do intros. I'm going to go first because I'm already talking. OK, good. So hi, I'm Lauren. If anyone's wondering what my pedigree is, why should I be hosting this panel? Um, my background in the industry spanned around uh, about 15 years now. Uh, coming from EA, Lionhead, Codemasters, Sega, I've, I've worked at many amazing studios on many awesome things. That doesn't mean that I am an expert in technical art, but thankfully, these guys are. Go on, introduce yourselves. Uh, I'm Bruce, I'm the CEO of Radforge, but I started out as a technical artist in games, and I look after a lot of the people on the panel, so that's why I'm here. Hi, my name is Piotr, and uh, I'm a junior technical artist. I started from a 3D background, and I've been doing this for about a year. Hi, uh, I'm Calvin, and I started as a technical artist, and I'm a technical artist. I've been in the industry for a few years. I worked at Studio Team Official, I was doing AI editing for a while. I like that, and now I'm here. Where are we? Oh, yeah. Sweet. Okay. Well, I suppose we should get started at the very, very beginning. And what I want out of one of you, I don't mind which, is the most succinct description of what a technical artist is that you can give to kick us off. Come on. Okay. So there's two types of tech artist, front end and back end. Front end is like, um, like visual effects and shaders and all that work, making art look good and making it optimized and work. And then there's what Ant focuses on with a lot of the other team, and that's tools tech. And that's about pipeline management and getting art into the game and making sure that the workflow to get things from A to B is efficient. But within those two types, there are a lot of subsectors. I can only imagine. There is a lot. <laughs> that's why Calvin was like, dear God. <laughs> they don't even start. I like that too. That's way better than what Art I said. problems. We no, all have way them. way better. No, it's good. It's, hey, combined, it was absolutely perfect. OK, so those out there that are fully aware of the different sides, back and front end and everything else that, that we've discussed already, where would you start? You want to you become a technical artist with a games industry, company, studio. What, what's the first step? Um, so for me, I uh, initially came on as a 3D artist, and my background came from that. So I had the experience with modeling, UVing, all that stuff, which is a good foot in the door, mm. because um, I mostly specialize in, I guess, front end, because it's so new to me. So I work on shaders and um, effects. And that's been really useful, because it basically elevates the 3D work that I've done. So it's like a very good foundation to have. And yeah, it, it was really good. It's pretty much like. To my knowledge, you can come from like a programming background or um, or art background, and yeah, I think for me it was art. And once you model, that's like a one step to closer towards it. It's pretty much yeah. Yeah, yeah I was kind of going to say with that, like you can come from pretty much any background, and even some tech artists start out with like technical design or like game design, uh, and ultimately you just you know pick something that you enjoy doing. You're just going to match it with any sort of problem anyway. Like, if you're, if you love free art, or you're studying free art, and you start to find that art out there, it's a soft spot to put things and put it back together again and then, and you find yourself working, you know, finding yourself with skills and learning from skills to kind of make that process easier, then that's just a really good way to sort of start out. Or, you know, another example could be you find yourself, you know, kind of sticking more. Materials, unreal materials as well. But I think 
I met Bruce through skateboarding. Like, we used to skate together. And honestly, I didn't even realize that the scale of Radforge and how it was about, but we formed a, a friendship. And, you know, he, due to that, he just he gave me a chance as a, as a 3D artist because he knew me as more as a person. And um, from there, uh, I just I showed my interest in, into doing that. And I think that's a, it's a big part. Like, if you're passionate about something, no matter which role you can get to, if you express that, I'm sure that will come back to you, you know? Like, as long as you, you just really want to do something or try it, then um, that shows. I think personality can sometimes take you further than skills because you can always learn skills, but... Absolutely, yeah. and, and doing what we do, you know, did everything you guys have said already about the game dev process, how it's, it's essentially not linear, that you don't know what's going to happen from day to day, what, what problem solving you're going to be faced with. You need people around you that you know are gonna keep a cool head and handle the challenge and not make the whole thing, you know, the wheels fall off and everything fall so, apart. So everyone on this panel, uh, like, that works at the studio, has passion over a skill set first. They are also incredibly good at their jobs, don't get me wrong, of like, course. we're very of lucky course. to have them in the studio, but it is passion, it is complete passion, and Pete found technical art through passion, that, that which is which is why he's uh, which is why I really wanted him to come down to this panel. This is his first major industry event and his first ever panel. Like, he's he was complaining You're that he, got, he was complaining that he got a guest pass and not an industry pass. <laughs> you can have mine. It's fine. I don't need it. I got loads. It's fine. Calvin, do you and Oran, do you have anything to add to that? There you go. Chat away. Ooh. But even in those situations, I guess that I try to find a positive in, in everything. I do my very best. And though, you know, there, there are certainly those gigs out there that are pain, <laughs> that are pain. But ultimately, everything is learning. So even if you find yourself in a studio and, I don't know, like a month in, you realize these guys don't have the same motivations as me. We don't understand, you know, on a very basic level, we're not having... Uh, you know, we're not seeing eye to eye. Take as much as you possibly can from that situation and work out what wasn't working and why yeah. would be my additional yeah. advice. Yeah, well, my career path has certainly been very odd. I started in the indie space, and the reason I'm on this tech art panel is really just because I kept on making tools. I was going to studios, and I would make tools as a gameplay programmer. I would make tools as a server programmer. Uh, and then I got my job where I was actually just making tools full time. Um, I, I do love passion and if you do have that passion it will show in your portfolio. I think technical art is a really good skill to have when you are developing that portfolio because it allows you to produce a piece of work that you can sort of get a sense of what's going on behind the scenes. 
I think for myself, it was really beneficial for me to develop a, a style to my work that I could then go ahead and show up my other skills with. Um, and that tech art was really helpful for me. Um, like having, I love voxel art, I love pixel art, and doing that in some of my personal projects made my portfolio really nice and consistent and the sort of transparent, you could understand what the gameplay systems were doing behind the scene. Do it. Let's do it. I'd agree with that. And I, th I think that kind of gives us the natural ebb and flow of the industry. You know, when we, when we see studios doing layoffs, for example, and everything that we've seen recently, those people should hopefully then regroup and think, right, what do we want to do now rather than being told what to do? And that should continue to, to you know, there should be a silver lining to all of these situations. I mean, I'm not saying it to anyone that's lost their job just yet, but yes, me too. I'm also quite excited, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's the best way to look at it. Um, okay, so talking about Radical Forge specifically, you're hiring a new technical artist. What are you looking for? You can learn skills, you can't learn, yeah, motivation. I can't even, I can't even picture what a, a tools portfolio would look like. Like, what, what does it, could you take us through your portfolio? <laughs> Go on, Anne. Well, I remember <laughs> when I first got my first in-studio job um, at TT Games. Um, back in 2018, and I came to them with a tool, and I showed it to the designers, and this is something that happens to me every day, it still happens to me now, when these developers, designers, whatever, get their hands on a new tool, they're always so giddy with excitement, they're like, oh my god, what can I do with this, and that was like, I knew I got the job then. Like, when I t go to an interview and people are like, oh my god, I, I really want to use this. This will be so good. Um, and that's something that happens to me, my day-to-day -day job. I, I, I show it all to Bruce. He's like, oh my god, I can't wait to use this. But I, I'm out of the office at the moment. And so I'm going to be thinking about it nonstop. Skateboarding, <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. That must be such an amazing thing to witness week on week, like having people just like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like talk about feeling valued in the workplace. Surely that's, that's all you need. Absolutely. I love it. With excitement. I bet, I bet he was. Oh, well, you know, we're not telling you not to take holidays, however, you are a, a very important part of this team, is the impression I'm getting. Um, I'm a little bit worried that we're going to overrun, and I'm sure we could probably get one or two questions in if we're quick, but I don't know where our dude is. Hey, Will. Hi. Is that all right? Thank you. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I'll confess, I knew Bruce a bit already, but I got this one. I can't possibly be Bruce. Maybe that's understandable. Got one in your pocket? We went to dinner with him in Germany, and all of the team brought out tech decks. It was brilliant. Are there anyone, any questions for these wonderful game devs that we've got up here? Do it. Hi, guys. Um, is 
Are you press? <laughs> um, so, was that, was that me or you, Will? Um, so, um, I can't give you a date. I can't tell you. Um, it's although over in the studio, but it's not my thing. It's a team thing. We'll announce it when we're ready to. Um, I am incredibly proud of the team and what we have built. Um, it is. It is quite possibly the best thing I think I've ever personally worked on, so I'm quite happy about that. Um, but we, we are excited. Look, I'd say look at some point next year. Yeah, yeah, so we have about 40 people on that, ge that game, and then we have uh, Calvin's crew, which work on a lot of uh, contract work and other own IP stuff. Um, you feel free to talk about that if you want, man. Like, do you want to talk about the you know, piece, the um, control stuff you do? What was the question exactly? I couldn't quite hear from over there. For, oh. It's 40 and Calvin's side is tw about 20, right? I think it's about 20, 30 or so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is like, it kind of like ebbs and flows because people come on and off of the contract stuff, it seems. Yeah, we keep stealing people from their team and they keep stealing people from our team. <laughs> no stress. So I can talk about this because my first role was technical art. Um, and I would probably say it depends. But from my personal experience, I think if you have a knowledge in coding, that gives you a massive leg up if you already have the art knowledge as well. So just kind of like, you know, both like look into Python or look into Blueprints, you know. Uh, a lot more projects these days are Unreal, so Blueprints is definitely a good shout. Um, but those would definitely give you a good leg up. You know, some people might suggest C++, but I would probably say that would be more of an advanced thing that I would never expect from like a junior technical artist. Um, but if, you, if coding's not your thing, then VFX is another good route, you know, because that is like a subset of technical art, um, and you could just go straight into that, making particle effects, making shaders, and that's a really good route as well. Um, lighting side, another subset, but honestly, I've never really seen like a junior lighting artist, so I'm not sure if I can talk about that really. But I hope that kind of gives some insight. Just, you know, focus on the more technical parts of, of the art production pipeline, I guess. Yeah, Noise? Right. I have a microphone. We're getting a lot of people from movies coming over, so this is very cool. Yeah, I like it. Just try and re-guild the games industry real quick. I'll, I'll be as quick as I can. Yeah, I'll be fine. It's okay. It's really not. I know. I mean, I think the thing to remember is we live and breathe this industry day in, day out. I mean, I have, 
uh, a, a full-time job and a baby, but I'm still spending my weekends reading about games industry news and what's going on. It's just the way it goes. So when, when these things happen, they probably feel a lot bigger to us because we're not, you know, it doesn't happen all of the time. And then when it does happen, and especially when it happens in succession, which is what we've seen in the last couple of weeks, it can be a little bit jarring. I have been in the games industry for, as I said, 15 years. I have worked at three studios that have been shut down and it hasn't hampered my career. It's not dulled my absolute excitement to be involved in games. It is one of the things that happens, as I said, the, the kind of natural ebb and flow that you get anyways. Um, everything is hinging on a project launching and if that project launches and it doesn't see the success that the kind of money people were expecting to see, then you're gonna see things, you know, maybe ever so slightly be shaved down. But as we were saying, it means that those people are still going to be super passionate about the industry. They still want to do the jobs that they've learned how to do for however long. And that feeds the industry with new studios and new IP and new ID. I mean, diversity of, of thought in the games industry is something that we really, really value. So these opportunities, whilst they are incredibly sad and they suck, like, don't get me wrong, it sucks. It's not happening all the time. You can... You can almost get a sense when you're at a studio when it's likely to happen or if it's going to happen. Um, and there's always so many people inside and outside of that studio who will want to help you find the next gig. So you'll never be left adrift, essentially. There'll always be somewhere and someone to look after you. Do you want to add anything to that, Bruce? Whoa, I nailed it. Okay, I'm leaving it there. Is that all right? Okay. I want to see good art skills, but I only need one example of that. And then I'd want to see how you made something really difficult, like really difficult and really technical, how you made something like morph into a place or like, like how, you, how you made like a certain mechanic work, for example, in real time. But I don't want to see just the mechanic or the art. I want to see the breakdown of how you did it. And I only need to see one of those things. I don't need to see 200. I only ever want to see your best work. So anything that's on your portfolio that isn't as good as the thing you did last week, nuke it, get rid of it. it like, because you will only be judged on your worst work. Does that make sense? Cool, Calvin, do you have anything to add to that? I mean, I don't have anything to, to really add other than if you come from a graphic design background, then maybe UI art is a good way to go as well. And that's definitely like a more creative side, but definitely very technical as well. Um, and like, yeah, I agree with everything that Bruce said in terms of the portfolio part. On that, actually, there are a lot less UI artists. Oh yeah, like, Would re you, like you think tech artists is a unicorn? A UI artist or a UX artist? Yeah. They're the unicorns, like they're, they're the real shit. They're <laughs> really hard to find, yeah. Yeah, especially um, UI artists that can do mock-ups in something like uh, After Effects was something that was very valuable at some of my past studios. 